Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for taking the break. Um, I am up here uh, with two gentlemen who are going to uh, lead us in a great discussion about C the Camara Project. So I'm going to hand over this microphone and let them introduce themselves. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Um, hello, everybody. Great that you are here. Uh, I'm Markus Kümmerle from Deutsche Telekom. Uh, I'm leading the Magenta API exposure program of Deutsche Telekom. Yeah, I'm happy to be here with my second head. Um, I am driving Camara, I think, since since the beginning, since two and a half years. Hello, my name is Alberto Torron. My name is Alberto Torron from Telefonica. Um, I'm the head of the go-to developers area for the um, Open Gateway initiative we do have in Telefonica globally deploying these days based on the Camara initiative uh, of the Linus Foundation. And we're really proud of, of being one of the believers in all of these initiatives, right? So, so we're happy to, to join you. Yep, let's get started. Okay, then let's get started. So hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, please imagine the fire behind us um, because it's a fire side chat. Um, yeah, beginning with the whole thing. Why are these... Uh, network or telco API is so important um, and interesting. Um, telcos have decided to open the networks uh, for the new business cases. And the reason are, uh, there are two reasons for that. Um, the one is today the world optimizes um, as best as possible. And for that, we need the interaction with the networks too. So there is a great potential. There is a great benefit, a great value for the customers. But also for the telcos, that's the second reason. Um, telcos can't stick to the pure connectivity. So it's very important for them that they get additional revenues, on top revenues. And for that, opening the networks, um, that is a real win-win situation. And then the question is how you can, how you can open the networks. Um, and in today's times, it's a good idea to do it automatically. And by that, automatically, you do it via APIs. So coming to the APIs. Um, then we thought about how, how we can create these APIs. Um, the first trials were using the existing technical APIs, but that failed. And the reason is these APIs require a lot of telco knowledge, uh, have a high complexity, and um, they are, can be different from telco network to telco network due to different uh, topologies, uh, vendors, and so on. So it's not a good idea to do this um, low technical level um, that we learned. And for that, we created a new level, an intent-based level of APIs with simple, easy to consume APIs. Um, on the other hand, when we started with that and had the talks with the first customers that were, for example, automotive customers, they told us, yeah, that's really great. We use the APIs, we build it in our cars, but only if these APIs are available in all the telco networks in your country. And our cars have a bad ability, they can drive over borders. So it should be working in Germany, but also in France, Spain, and all other countries too. So this uh, global availability, that was the second big driver for the whole thing. And out of this, we created the idea uh, for Camara for the open source project. Um, two and a half years ago, we reached out to the first partners, for example, also Telefonica, and together we worked on it. We launched it at Mobile World Congress 22 with 22 partners, and now it has grown significantly. Um, we are happy to say that we now have more than 70, 750 people and from more than 250 companies in Camara, and that's really a, a success story. But it's not sufficient to do that. To make real business happen, we need an ecosystem. And for the ecosystem, we need something more. Well, we need many more things, you know. The, the idea is not about uh, being creative only with, uh, with the technology. The idea is to figure out what will be the best use cases and how to get to the correct partners in order to speed up the process. I mean, all the big telcos, are, have plenty of technology around. We've been growing our business based on new technologies, faster networks, more capabilities, and so on. And we've been using APIs for, for ages these days, right? So, so the idea is, what if 
what if this is accessible to, to the developers? What if we make this easy enough? And what if we do find together with the best developers on earth, the best use cases that can bring more security to the transactions, bring new use cases in the transportation, bring um, speed and trust to, to the evolution of the co personal communications and the B2B communications as well. What if we can give you another taste of the use of technology at home? What if all of this can be deployed together as we did, for example, with the roaming? You remember the early days of the roaming were a nightmare, but then we had agreed to, in, to exchange information in a proper manner, and from that point on, it, it grew, we grew a business together that today is, is very, very big, right? So, so the point is, what if we're capable to simplify the, the adoption of this new technology, and what if we bring the latest uh, networks at the fastest speeds we've ever seen with a, a taste of new services uh, together with you? Right. This is the point. Okay. That's great. Um, let's talk a little bit more, um, more to your, your overall presentation here. Marcus, um, tell us a little bit more about telco network capabilities, API t capabilities. Yeah, let's have some examples. Okay, it, perfect. So first of all, I want to point out it's not limited to mobile connection. We're also looking on the fixed line connection and all other Telcos 2 uh, APIs from, from the Telcos 2 capabilities from the Telcos 2. Um, yeah, let's have some examples. So we, we can divide it into two groups. Um, on the one hand, Telcos have a lot of data about the network and all the contracts. Um, and so we know a lot about the devices. So we can tell exactly where a device is, which can be very helpful. Uh, we know a lot about the status of a device, if it's connected or not, or if it's in roaming state and where it is. Um, but also we know a lot about the network itself. So we know how the situation is in a specific cell. Uh, we know how congested it is. Um, and that could help to do some yeah, traffic jam warnings, for example. Um, let, let's imagine a simple example, a car is driving on a road and um, the driver is have a, f a very important phone call and he wants to know if I drive, follow this road in, in, in one kilometer, five kilometer, ten kilometers, how is the situation, uh, can I continue or shall I do better a break and finalize my call? Such simple things uh, can be answered. So this is one part uh, using all the information which we have in our network about network and devices. The second one is the more interesting one. So the the possibility to actively configure or influence the network. For example, with quality and demand. So it's possible to prioritize a data connection from, from a device, from a specific application on device to a specific server and application on the internet. And by that, um, yeah, getting a reliable connection, um, a low stable latency and, and uh, a stable bandwidth. And that is interesting for a lot of use cases. So imagine remote control from a small uh, drone or HEV in a, in a, uh, in, in a factory uh, up to complete teleoperated driving. That is a great field. Um, the second great field is, for example, AR, VR. Um, also very important, prominent example is remote maintenance. Uh, you have unexperienced people all around the world they are supported by experts in the, in the office and uh, using some, some AR VR glasses. Um, perfect case for, for this uh, quality demand. Gaming is a big thing. So the faster you can shoot, the, the better you are. That's very easy. And then um, the, the also a big field is uh, safeguarding of transactions. So banking transactions, eBay, all, all kind of, of things. Uh, you, you, you Know it also, you are clicking on a button, uh, yes, I do the transaction, and then you are waiting, you see the send clock, nothing is going on. And exactly to avoid this situation, to safeguard this little piece of information, we can use this API. So there is a lot of potential in, um, and these are only the, the, the first technical examples. 
uh, I'm pretty sure the real business demand, customer demand, will come. It helps us to get in touch with the customers, to, to have talks with them, and to see what they really demand, and then we want to build uh, the best APIs for them. Great, thank you. Um, with that in mind, uh, Alberto, what are you hearing from your customers? Is What does the demand look like? We have um, a very, very insistent demand in terms of adding layers of security, because we, we're becoming a trusted party for transactions of our customers at the end of the day. From the earliest uh, banking services, we do send SMSs to confirm with one time password uh, the transaction, right? So this is becoming uh, more and more difficult because uh, the smishing attacks are, are becoming important these days. So we're figuring out if there's a way to, to provide different set of services based on APIs that could handle these these situations, right? At the end of the day, one one certain thing is, um, one way or the other, the telco uh, companies tend to be a bank for the privacy of the users. I mean, we don't sell the data of our uh, customers, and that may, may should make us become a, a, a trust party for the transactions. So, if you think it really, really in short term, why not addressing that need and figuring out if there's something we can do to help? The, the trust and the, and the confidence of the online transactions that on a daily basis we all do, do perform, right? But more and more services will be coming from the quality on demand API that we call later, we'll see more of that. And many other things that combine will create completely different digital experiences for our customers. And that's the value we must provide together. I mean, it's not about the telco bringing all the, the, the stuff home and, and getting the, all the monetization of the services. It's about creating this really, really fast to make sure we do align to the purpose and we help, for instance, the sellers know better their customers with their trust on board, right? The privacy must be granted and it's something that we do very, very well. We're used to that. So if we go together and address these market needs, we will create tons of new value, new revenue streams, right? So how are we going to address those market needs? Um, enter Kamara. So do you want, can you talk a little bit about um, how, how that's going to happen and what problems are going to be solved with this project? It started small and it gets larger. That's a simple, <laughs> simple summary. No, um, we started, I think, in a group of eight in, in early 2021. Um, and we thought about how we shall organize this Telco Alliance. Um, we want to, wanted to go a different way. So typically Telcos tend to do some SDOs, so standardization organizations, and then take three or five years to create some papers and uh, then you get the APIs. But in two days time, that is too slow. Um, so then the business is gone and uh, the chance is, is away. So we decided to do it differently uh, to do standardization via code, via an open source project. And by that we approach the Linux Foundation because Linux Foundation is the biggest organization on that planet with the biggest open source projects and they know how to do open source projects. So, um, and, uh, but we also wanted to have this telco domain knowledge in. So we had talks with the GSMA um, about a collaboration between the two organizations and it was a hard time in the beginning um, to, to do all the negotiations and create a legal terms of reference, but we have managed it. And finally, yeah, we could launch it at Mobile Urban Rest 22 with already 22 partners. And um, that was, I think, the, the real kickoff and starting point. And then people, it, it grow exponentially. It, we, we haven't done any great ad advertisement for it. Um, it was only from, from mouth to mouth and uh, people came and, and it grew and we got more APIs. Now I think we have 14 plus four API families in Camara already. Um, and and where, where can people find access to this? Oh, it's quite easy. Um, there is a slide in, I think it's uh, the last one. <laughs> um, there you can see. Yeah, exactly. 
Thanks a lot. So if you want to get more information about Camara, use this QR code or this link uh, for, to our nice webpage. Um, also, thanks to Linux Foundation for creating this. Um, and yeah, you can get a contact page and can also ask all questions you have. I think we can talk a little bit more about the architecture um, and some of the specific work that's been done. So let me throw up this architecture slide. Um, <laughs> okay, so that, that picture, we can quickly go through it. That's exactly this uh, intent-based level. You can see um, the, the green boxes at the, at the bottom are the technical API standards, the existing ones. Um, but on, based on this, we want to create this intent-based level. Let's do it with an example. So let's again take this quality and demand. Um, a customer is coming and he is telling us, please give me the best quality you have for the next hour from this device and this application on the device to this server and this application on the server. That's a simple question he gives us. He does not care about any network telco topics. Simple, easy to consume. What we are doing now, we are checking, first of all, what is the situation on the device. Um, we are already in talks with device manufacturers to optimize the latency on the device. So that are APIs which are in the chipset of, of the devices. Second, we are looking in our mobile network. And there we have several opportunities. If the uh, device is in a 5G standalone cell with a slice, a low latency slice, it's the best to use that slice. If no slice is available, you can using the 5QI classes in the cell and uh, if the device is only in a 4G network at the countryside, you can use QCI classes. So we have to look in which situation are we and what can we do to optimize the latency here. And then it continues to the, um, to the fixed line. Um, there is an exchange point between the telco infrastructure and the internet. And the next job is to, to do some traffic influence to bring uh, the traffic to the closest exchange point um, so to, to avoid the latencies also in the fixed line. And then you look at the back end application, where is it? Uh, could it be relocated to the closest edge, independent if it's a telco edge or a hyperscaler edge, um, and then bring the application there. And if there are some devices in a, in a Wi-Fi, in a home network, then we have to do some optimization in the, in the Wi-Fi. And all this complexity is behind this simple, easy to consume API. You can see it at this slide, so the, the blue layer on top, that's the easy one and that's visible to the developers to make it easy. Um, the light blue one, that's the job of the telcos, the more difficult one, and the, the green ones, that are the basic capabilities which we use. And, and I will land the plane that's fine. I think it'll be easier. What if uh, we can provide you a premium service to, to make your gaming experience much better. What if we can provide a premium service based on this Q, quality on demand service? What if we can provide security from the sky based on drones that can fly even in congested uh, networks? What if we can provide services that will make holograms feasible for a daily basis or metaverse services? I don't know. And what if, and this could be shocking if we get to that point, what if the cars don't need that much infrastructure on board and can rely on the service that, that we can provide from the edge and our antennas and so you can pay as you drive autonomously in the cities? What, what if all of this will become feasible in the, in the few, next few months? What if we can do that? Right, so, so the thing is, we're deploying ultra-fast uh, networks, we're deploying ultra low latency uh, networks, mobile networks as well. And if you mix all the pieces together, we can create digital experiences that will become a game changer in the really close future in Europe and in America, right? So, so the point is, what if we do it all together under, under the same standard and, and create value as an aggregate for the market? That, that's the challenge we are trying to address. Right? So what, 
what does it look like in terms of usage so far? So Marcus, you were saying earlier that there's a handful, there's a pretty decent number of APIs already set up. Are any of those actually being deployed and used in production right now? Yeah, let's, let's look back to Mobile World Congress this year. Um, there we already have more than 20 showcases of Camara APIs in the live networks all over the world. So from Brazil, from your company, up to, I think it was Indonesia, from Axiata, um, a lot of networks already had implemented the first APIs and uh, the situation has, has improved since then. So there's a lot going on. Um, in general, we can say 22 was the year of the first APIs in the labs. 23 is the year of the first technical APIs in the live networks. And now the next step is the commercial one. So we need the commercial products of the APIs and all the telcos are currently hard, uh, really working on that uh, to make it happen. Great. Um, and so, Alberto, you mentioned a little bit about um, privacy and uh, regulations in Europe. How does that impact the work that you're doing? A lot. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's shocking. We're shocked with that. And the thing is that thankfully, we, the, the European telcos are used to, to get privacy by default and security by default. And this is a red line. And we're not going to cross that border. We we'll make sure our customers' privacy will be granted from scratch, right? And and that's a, a very big win for the start, but make, makes all, all the stuff difficult at the very beginning, right? Not only the privacy itself and the regulations related to privacy, but also all the rest of the regulations in the telco space related to com how do we compete. And, and at the end of the day, we're very big companies and we cannot agree to deploy the same service at the same prices uh, in the same market, right? So, so it's absolutely shocking the, 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 what we call the multi telco discussions are surrounded by lawyers from each side and you have to make sure that you say the exact words that cannot uh, end in an antitrust uh, um, uh, how do you call it? Lawsuit. Uh, lawsuit exactly. yeah. So the, the idea is is, is that taking advantage of the, of the existing advantage of the existing technologies with the with the difficulties we will suffer in the technical and legal and economical area in the, in the Europe these days is a big challenge but we're going to address it very very well right so so the point is we we are sure that we're going to be committed in the future as we as we have always been in taking care of the privacy of our customers by default, but we need to learn how to deal with big, big players like hyperscalers or aggregators that must adhere to these terms in Europe as well, right? And it's not only about them, it's, it's like um, social uh, media and so on. There are plenty of different parties involved in these initiatives that must adhere to the extent of the law. So, so you cannot go by your own in a regulated space like the European, right? So how does that work then when you're trying to deploy similar services, say in South America, where maybe the restrictions aren't quite as stringent as in Europe? Is, does that create more work or do you just port over what you've already done for the Europe? We do it following the same standards these days uh, because what we're aiming to is a global service. We want to make sure that come what may, uh, we think that the, 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 all the world is going to go in the same direction. We're going to protect the privacy of the users, right? So we see that in America these days, there, things are changing and, and there's much more protection to the end user these days in the privacy than it was in the previous years. But the cases that we're going really, really to the extreme in Europe, this is shocking to discuss up to the last uh, specific detail of each contract, right? So. It's something we're learning to do and we'll do for, yeah. for such a big service. So where does the bulk of that, that work fall on? Is Does it fall onto the telcos or more to the developers who are coding these APIs? Or is it kind of everybody all hands on deck? Everybody must adhere to that. So, so we set the standard at the end of the day because we know very well the regulation and we've been dealing with that for ages. Uh, Telefonica will be one, uh, one century old 
next yes. next year. So imagine if we we used to protect the, the data. So of course all the rest of the players must adhere to our standards, and then we grow a business together. Great. So what's next then? Um, we had some. Uh, we had a discussion earlier today about 6G, and we know AI is all over the place right now. So where do you see Kamara evolving as technology evolves beyond just the standard 5G stuff that's getting embraced very quickly right now? Yeah, I think the, the way forward is to create more customer um, demanding APIs. Um, currently, we are too technical. We use the first technical capabilities, we create APIs out of it. Yes, the customers need it, they can do nice things with it, but we should now learn from the customer what is your real demand, what you really need for us, and, and build these APIs. And that could be combinations of all these technical capabilities, like, like with this quality and demand, um, or more specific things. Um, so also an example, we are in, in contact with one of the big um, hyperscaler companies and thought, yeah, quality demand is a good thing for them. Uh, then they told us, oh, no, real time is not so interesting. For us, it would be more interesting to see um, how is the performance of a specific cell on a typical summer day in the afternoon 4 p.m. Uh, because they are optimized already and this information helps them to optimize the whole network. So it's much more important for them than having the real time information. So and that's, that's exactly the example where we have to go. We have to get in touch with the customers, get all the requirements and see what best we can do for the sake for the customer. Um, yes. And I imagine a lot of that changes in real time and it changes as they're you know, deploying this stuff and starting to use them. So I imagine that would be uh, one of the positives here of, of open source is the ability to, to develop those things very quickly. Yeah. That's that's the only possibility to do it in that way, because it's an agile process. Um, people, w without having a first example, people don't know what they, ne what they need. So we have to show first something, then they get the idea, oh, that could be good, and that would be good, and change that. So it's, it's a typical agile way of working, which is really key, and uh, we are very happy that we have chosen that way. Great. Um, so. Going back a little bit to uh, organizations that are participating in Camaro, um, I know it's it's we're starting primarily with the telco folks, but are you looking to bring in the hyperscalers and all of the SIs and the vendors and the whole ecosystem, or is it, you know, you're, maybe you're starting with the telcos and kind of branching out from there? What does that look like? So it's key to have not only the telcos in, so because we need the vendors um, if we want to create. Um, the, uh, the, the APIs following the demand of the customer, we have also to influence the roadmap of the vendors because we need a basic technical uh, capabilities here. So that's important. I'm happy uh, to say that we have a lot of them already in Camara, so you can see it on the local list. We have Ericsson, Nokia, Mavenir, Huawei, uh, only to name a couple of them, uh, which is really great. Then, sure, we need um, as much as possible operators here, telcos because the APIs have to be implemented in all the networks. And this is also great. Um, we have from the US, uh, Verizon and, and T-Mobile and AT&T as the biggest ones. Uh, for Europe, we have Telefonica, DT, us. We have Telecom Italia, Orange. A good coverage in Europe. Um, we have uh, Exeta. We have China Telecom, China Universe, Huawei, um, uh, even Telcos from small countries like Peru, Uruguay, and, and, and Hawaii even. I want to travel there. Uh, so that's, that's really, really great. We have already a very good coverage from the operators. But then um, we need, we need the, the customers. And that are the hyperscalers, yes, because that are interesting customers for us. So happy that we have very active Microsoft in, uh, and also Google, and in um, the little, little, little background, we also have the other two ones uh, working with us. That's really great. Um, but we would like to have more customers in because we want to follow this, this customer demand and it's key to get all the requirements here. So do you think, what are some of the barriers to, to these organizations joining or um, maybe they don't know about 
the benefits is are you seeing any of that or what's the biggest barrier i think it's just to, to know what's going on um, because we yes we have launched it but it was visible only in the, the telco um, ecosystem and now we have to make it public and tell look we have something great for you um, what, what do you really need from us please join help us help us to develop the, the best apis for you and it's just the next step it's something normal i think um, what we have to do now mm -hmm. well there are more yeah of course first of all developers must know that the capabilities are around i mean we're launching this in spain for with with an with an early adopters program in Spain, Germany, and Brazil, and we we'll start testing by November, right? So, so hopefully, for the next mobile world conference, we'll be really ready with building customers, with a lot of building customers, hopefully, right? So, so the idea is, if we manage to make sure do align, we do align to the uh, privacy standards, the regulations, and so on, and we've finally get all the stuff um, set and ready in the, le in the legal part of this business. And this hopefully will be ready in a couple of weeks. The, the plan is to start testing with hand customers really, really fast. And we're on it, right? We're starting developing the, the proofs of concept. And we have this, I don't know, maybe almost 300 uh, early adopter uh, uh, companies registered in our portal so so we we find there's a, a lot of interest and, and the thing is all of them say the same thing the same the same song okay make sure you align with the rest of the telco in your country and we go together to the market otherwise it won't make sense right so that's what we're aiming to so um what are how, how are you how are companies like telefonica gonna monetize this well, that's the easy one. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're used to, to, to sell services, separated or aggregating them onto bigger services. And we think uh, that the point is, if they, all the industry had, um, finds out the, the best way for each API to charge for the service, for the number of instances, the time you use it, or the bundle of, of, uh, of um, API uh, consumption you you do in a monthly basis, whatever. I mean, it shouldn't be a big issue to, to prove the value to the market, right? So, so we don't we don't see in that point a barrier at all. We we think that probably given the uh, diverse diversity of, of APIs we do uh, we're going to provide, we'll need to study case by case what will be the best way to go to the market with the developers to to make sure we all together find the value. Right. And are you feeling any sense of competition um, with some of your other, uh, some of the other telcos in terms of how they're using Kamara is, and these APIs? Is it more of everyone's working together or are we seeing a lot of forking happening and people trying to solve similar problems and then close sourcing what they've come up with? I think currently we have a very good situation. So we all know we only win together when it comes to the API definition, because only this standard, this, this global availability is key. So there is no competition. There is a real good collaboration. Because um, everyone has the same problems. So there. Yes, yes. The competition comes when, when you think of the implementation of the API. There you have the differentiation and uh, there you can try to implement it more efficient, better, faster, than the others, and that's still open, and that's okay. Yeah, and that's where the monetization piece comes in as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so we we talked a little bit about some of the APIs that already that are already out there. Um, is there anything more that you want to share about that, or anything that's maybe currently in the works that people can look forward to seeing soon? I think one one important topic is. Um, there has been alignment between the Linux Foundation, between the GSMA and uh, TM Forum mm -hmm. about the collaboration of the different standardization uh, bodies. Um, because the industry wants to have one solution and not three. Um, and we are very happy to have created a white paper for it. So we aligned uh, the area of each of them. 
and also here we have a very good collaboration so and um, it is done like we have the technical standards from 3GPP, 3GPP for example or broadband or from uh, CNCF from from the Etsy Mac for, for cloud that is the, the technical layer um, then we have TM forum for the whole orchestration and, and management of the thing and then for the for the customer facing the intent based customer APIs we have Camara and I think that's that's a really successful Camara to be to get this role but it's also a great responsibility um, so customers and the whole industry is relying to us and uh, so yeah we are, are happy to go the next step and that we will announce tomorrow uh, so if you like you can join the keynote there could be something in from Camara uh, if you're interested great um, before we open it up to additional questions um, how closely aligned are you with other open source groups and projects is that is are you seeing a lot of integration there or is it more kind of integrating across each other in terms of the members so in the moment the, the, the most important alignment was with tm forum and with the gsma yep. uh, that is done now but uh, there is much more to go so we have a uh, we're in talks with the etsy mac uh, we are in talks with open id um, so with a couple of more um, but it, it's, it's going on and has to be done great all right, are there any questions in the room? Hi, I would have two questions. One is that where do you draw the line between uh, the CGPP defined APIs and the Comora APIs or TM forum or other organizations and the Comora APIs. You had a slide with these layers, but I think I need some more clarification on that. The other question is, um, uh, you said that there is this common interest to keep the APIs uh, the same and all of that, but still do you plan to have some kind of a conformance program for the APIs or some kind of, you know, like a way to test if an API is a common API or not, and or if you plan to do some kind of a versioning of the APIs, because now you are in an easy phase when every API is the first one, but there will be a second and a third. I can answer you the, the second one, because it's something we discussed uh, over the last few weeks at, at my office, and uh, I was uh, given a I think it was a very correct answer, right? At the end of the day, we, we, what we do is to share repositories and set the standards. And uh, at the end of, the, of all of this initiative, uh, what we send to the market is a couple of lines of code. One single line of code is what we always mention, but probably could be a couple of them, with, um, with all the commands you need to, to use to uh, ask your uh, telco provider about something, right? If you have the repositories with all the versions and we simply say, listen, Telefonica is using version 3.1 of this one and you have the repository, it will be straightforward for you. It's not a completely different integration. But what we aim to do is to make sure that we do align to the, in each country to go together with the changes and the evolutions, right? So that's the aim. Let's figure out what will be the best way to roll up this app because, it's, as you can imagine, we're extremely complex organizations. But the easiest way will be, first of all, show all the steps of the project and show where you are with your standardization. Probably the differences will be pretty tiny, right? But if there, there are some, you will have plenty of documentation on board in the same place it was from the very beginning, right? But again, it's not easy at all. One of the challenges we, we face, and it's something that we probably get uh, very fast over it, is that the starting point from the one MNO to other, or one telco company to other, is completely different. I mean, we at Telefonica, we've been investing tons of efforts and money over the last few years to make sure that everything is ready for something like this to come. And for us, it's really strategic because we see the value but not all of the players around are the same page, right? But again, it will be about 
sharing all the knowledge, and making sure this consi consists on open source information, documentation, and standardization. Otherwise, it won't work. Right? And the first one is me. Okay. And for the first one, I would like to show one slide. Ah, it works. Great. So, going one level deeper for you. Um, looking at the customer facing APIs, uh, we decided to create three different groups. The one are the service APIs, so the APIs who really do the, the functionality, provide the content. Then we have service management APIs um, who enable the service APIs, and then we have the operate APIs. Let's do an example. Again, quality demand. A customer is in a cell, and the first thing he wants to know, how is my performance in the cell? And this API is a service management API. So he can ask, and he get the information, uh, it's not so good. Um, yeah. Then the second question he has, what services are available to improve the situation? And that is an operate API from TM Forum. So here he gets the catalog of the available services in a cell. And then he sees, oh look, there is a, a column demand service API, which I can call. So that's the next step. Then he calls the, the service API. Uh, and then at the end, he wants to know, how has the situation changed? How is my performance now? Uh, again, he calls the service management API. How is my performance? And gets, oh, it's now exciting. So, and for that, the customer is happy to pay some five cents for that. And uh, that's exactly the way the things should work. And um, it's good to organize the APIs in that way because Team Forum already has created this Operate APIs. We don't want to duplicate the work. So it's a good thing. And we focus on Camaro really on the service and service management APIs. Thanks. Just building on the implementation and uh, you know viewing a little bit forward, would it operate similar to and and you know I don't know what the end user is is it like me or is it an enterprise or it could be both or it could be an IoT or whatever, but for if you if you take an analogy of data services roaming and data, right we move around and go to another country we get a text, you have low speed data click here you get high speed five gig for X dollars, right? Or something like that. That is increasing our throughput and bandwidth and all that, right? And that's kind of, I wouldn't say quality on demand, but bandwidth on demand or whatever. Are you envisioning, or not bandwidth, but just, you know, speed on demand? Yeah. Or, or latency. Or latency, right? Are latency. You, so you're, is, is the implementation of this going to be something similar for uh, for for all the other services uh, like quality on demand or is it through some more portals and things like that or is it going to is it coming to the phone or is it just going to stay with the uh, network management and the ops people i don't know if you're going to understand the joke <laughs> as long as it's not in Spanish. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Galician, and, and, and we all answer with perhaps, uh, we don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a joke. The, the idea is, what if, if you have the option? I don't, I, I don't see uh, from this type of initiatives the, the compulsory, compulsory use of certain services in, in order to get enough from your supplier. It's the opposite one. So I see that there will come some premium services that will make a difference in the latency, completely different to the throughput. In, in the latency, uh, in congested services where there are plenty of people and you cannot, with the existing networks, do anything, then, then probably you'll find out a way to do some basic stuff that, that otherwise would be completely impossible, right? But the case is that we want to preserve so far the, the uh, network neutrality. I think we think this is a basic, right? So, so it's not about that. We're not touching that that space so far, because the regulation doesn't let us move 
for than that, right? So, so the idea is, what if you find, we find a way to make use cases profitable, profitable for the telco with the existing networks and the networks to come, and very good for the end customer. Call it B2B, B2C, B2B2C, call it a drone. It depends strongly on, on, on the use case. And we're trying to discover the faster the better these use cases that will change the industry. Because we think this will change the industry for better. But we must preserve the existing regulations and adhere to that. And, and that's something I want to stress because it's something for us very key. Right? Any other questions? All right, I think we can wrap up this session. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much.